of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Would you be seated just for a few moments, please? Thank you. Could I just extend on behalf of the cathedral community a very warm welcome to those who are receiving ministries this evening. It's good to see you here and be assured of the prayers of the cathedral community, both those who are here, but also those who are joining us in live stream uh, this evening. You're very much in our prayers and we ask God to be with you. So, welcome. Good, I'd just like to also welcome you here today, the four of you who are receiving the ministries uh, in preparation for your ordination as deacons. And uh, unfortunately, one of your number can't be with us this evening, but uh, we will make that up in due course. This is, as you know, an important step towards holy orders, and we welcome also your spouses, your family and friends on this important day. I think it's particularly fitting that this is happening on the Feast of the Exaltation of the Cross, to receive the ministries because it is the cross that stands at the center of our lives as Christians. The cross gives meaning to our life because it is the cross that saves us, gives us new life, and gives meaning to the sufferings of the men and women we will serve as ordained ministers. The cross is the glory of Christ it is his supreme sacrifice, his act of infinite love for us. And unless the cross is a part of our lives, as those called to holy orders, then we cannot hope to proclaim the self-giving love of Christ to others. It is only through the cross that we realize just what our ministry is. Not surprisingly, I'd like to just read a paragraph from one of Cardinal Newman's most famous servant sermons, The Cross of Christ, The Measure of the World. In it, Newman says, how are we to look at things? This is the question which all persons of observation ask themselves and answer each in his own way. They wish to think by rule, by something within them, which may harmonize and adjust what is without them. Such is the need felt by reflective minds. Now let me ask, what is the real key? What is the Christian interpretation of this world? What is given us by revelation to estimate and measure this world by? I say it is the crucifixion of the Son of God. So I promise you my prayers today and my support as you proceed to ordination and the prayers of the diocese go with you. And may the sign of the cross be with you always. If you please stand and we... Thank you. And we proceed with the Mass, as always, by acknowledging our sinfulness. Lord Jesus, you were lifted up to draw all people to yourself. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have shouldered the cross to bear our sufferings and sinfulness. Christ, have mercy. You open your for your people the way from death to life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo.
Let us pray. O God, who willed that your only begotten Son should undergo the cross to save the human race, grant us, we pray, that we who have known his mystery on earth may merit the grace of his redemption in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Numbers. On the way through the wilderness, the people lost patience. They spoke against God and against Moses. Why did you bring us out of Egypt to die in this wilderness? For there is neither bread nor water here. We are sick of this unsatisfying food. At this, God sent fiery serpents among the people. Their bite brought death to many in Israel. The people came and said to Moses, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Intercede for us with the Lord to save us from these serpents. Moses interceded for the people. And the Lord answered him, Make a fiery serpent and put it on a standard. If anyone is bitten and looks at it, he shall live. So Moses fashioned a bronze serpent, which he put on a standard. And if anyone was bitten by a serpent, he looked at the bronze serpent and lived. This is the word of the Lord.
a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, no one has gone up to heaven except the one who came down from heaven, the Son of Man who is in heaven. And the Son of Man must be lifted up as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Yes, God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. For God sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. reminded in our first reading tonight of the wandering of God's people in the wilderness. Their liberation seemed elusive and far away. Their flight from slavery often leading to an intolerable existence in the harshest of places. A constant challenge that led to much moaning and groaning. They lost patience and spoke against God and his minister Moses. This is not moaning and groaning in the sense of sometimes we might at mere inconvenience, but it comes from the depth of the heart and the soul that these harrowing and frightening challenges of the wilderness. Death confronts the Hebrew people many times in their wilderness journey with hunger and starvation, thirst, and in this reading with a particularly frightening and deeply disturbing invasion of fiery and poisonous serpents. That ancient symbol of the fall of the devil of whom God said, you will strike at humanity's heel. God then asks Moses to do something that may seem odd, even shocking, to make an image of the serpent and hold it up on a stick. Lifting it up and looking on the image transforms its bite of death into healing. Jesus points out in tonight's gospel, that he too will be lifted up. He too will die on a cross, and in his lifting up, he will be seen by all the people. This feast invites us, you and me, to look upon the cross, so that in our adoration, in our beholding, the grace of mercy, of God's healing and forgiveness can flow into our lives and bring us freedom. John Shea writes, as we look upon the cross, what are we to believe? We are to comprehend divine life that has entered into human life precisely at the point where human life is failing in death. 
the crucifixion of our Lord brings a fullness of life. Jesus did not cling to equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and become as men are. And being as all are, he was humbly yet even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high. Tonight, one of you will receive candidacy. This public acknowledgement of your journey of discernment, of a vocation, a calling of God. It is a journey, much like the journey of the people in the first reading, a journey of learning to imitate this self-emptying of Christ. Pope Francis writes that the Greek word martyr means witness, the one who proclaims, attests to, and shouts of the joy of the resurrection. He is the one who announces the victory of life over death, of love over hate, of justice over abuse. The ministry of Lecter is the ministry of witness by proclamation of the Word of God. And the ministry of the Acolyte is the ministry of service at the table, the servant who attends first to the brothers and sisters, and then to the poor. Of course, this ministry is derived from the diaconia of the Eucharist. In your formation at the moment, you are studying scripture. You are wrestling with theology and witnessing and contributing to pastoral care. All of this is so that you can discover self-emptying, that you can discover how to be a servant. Why not ask your parish priest, COVID willing, about visiting in a nursing home or residential home? But ask the healthcare assistants about washing and bathing their anxious and afraid clients. What can you learn from them about holding another in showing compassion? And whilst in the nursing home, ask those who cook or the carers who serve food and prepare meals for the different needs of their residents, what would they prepare differently for what might be the last nourishment of the frail and the dying in their care? Help them to see how the work that they do is the work that Christ himself undertook and what we celebrate in this Mass. In your ministries received today, may they see the dignity of their labour, honoured in the holy place of the Church. Serving others is precisely the declaration of God's will. It's the way that God chose and chooses today to be amongst us in the world. May you be lifted up so that those who look at your unfolding and development, developing ministry of service in coming close to you may learn what God is like. Yes, God loved the world so much that he gave him his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost but may have eternal life. May you be heralds to others in your service of that eternal life.
that he who is to be admitted to candidature for ordination as a deacon, please come forward. Alison Rebello. My dear son, the pastors and teachers in charge of your formation and others who know you have given a favorable account of you and we have full confidence in their testimony. In response to the Lord's call, are you resolved to complete your preparation so that in due time you will be ready to be ordained for the ministry of the church? The church receives your declaration with joy. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to completion. Just please stand. Brothers and sisters, let us ask God, our Lord, to pour out his grace and blessing on this servant of his who desires to give his life to the ministry of the church. Lord, Hear our prayers for your son, who wishes to dedicate himself to your service and the service of your people in the sacred ministry. Bless him in your fatherly love, that he may persevere in his vocation and through his loving fidelity to Christ the priest, be worthy to carry out the church's apostolic mission. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. who are to be instituted in the Ministry of Reader, please come forward. Alison Rebello. Gareth Rowe. Bong Nadir. Brothers and sisters, let us ask God our Father to bless these servants who have been chosen for the ministry of reader. Let us pray that they may be faithful to the work entrusted to them, proclaim Christ to the world, and so give glory to our Father in heaven. Lord God, source of all goodness and light, you sent your only Son the word of life, reveal to mankind the mystery of your love. Bless our brothers who have been chosen for the ministry of reader. Grant that as they meditate constantly on your word, they may grow in its wisdom and faithfully proclaim it to your people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Take this book of Holy Scripture and be faithful in handing on the word of God so that it may grow strong in the hearts of his people. Amen. Take this book of Holy Scripture and be faithful in handing on the word of God so that it may grow strong in the hearts of his people. Take this book of Holy Scripture and be faithful in handing on the word of God so that it may grow strong in the hearts of his people. Amen. Those who are to be instituted in the ministry of Acolyte, please come forward. Gareth Rowe, 
Bon Nidea. Present. Neil Haggistow. Present. Brothers and sisters, let us pray to the Lord for those chosen by him to serve in the ministry of Acolyte. Let us ask him to fill them with his blessing and strengthen them for faithful service in the church. God of mercy, through your only Son you entrusted the bread of life to your church. Bless our brothers who have been chosen for the ministry of Acolyte. Grant that they may be faithful in the service of your altar and in giving thanks to others and in giving to others the bread of life. May he grow always in faith and love and so build up your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Take this vessel with bread for the celebration of the Eucharist Make your life worthy of your service at the table of the Lord and of his church. Amen. Take this vessel with bread for the celebration of the Eucharist. Make your life worthy of your service at the table of the Lord and his church. Take this vessel with the bread for the celebration of the Eucharist. Make your life worthy of your service at the table of the Lord and his church. Amen. So let us pray to God our Father, whose word of truth, compassion, and merciful love has been spoken in Jesus our Saviour. response to let us pray to the Lord is, Lord, hear our prayer, that our brothers may draw closer to Christ and be his witness in the world. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that they may share the burdens of others and always listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Our prayer that they may become ministers of the church who will strengthen the faith of their brothers and sisters by word and example, and gather them together to share in the Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That their families and fellow parishioners who have supported them by their love and prayers may be blessed and encouraged in all they do as they continue to journey with them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who we are called to serve to the Lord in the church or in the world may respond with generosity of spirit and follow him more closely in their chosen way of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask Mary to accompany us in prayer as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord, help your servants to understand and live the mystery of your love more completely every day. Deepen their sense of purpose as they prepare for the sacred ministry of the church, and fill them with the spirit of your love so that they may be wholehearted in bringing salvation to mankind for the glory of your name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray that this sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, which on the altar of the cross cancelled the offence of the whole world, cleanse us, we pray, of all our sins, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you placed the salvation of the human race on the wood of the cross, so that where death arose, life might again spring forth. And the evil one who conquered on a tree might likewise on a tree be conquered through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy Lord God of all, heaven and earth, full of your glory, Hosanna. Blessed is he comes in the name of the Lord, the Son in heaven. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of The mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Having been nourished by your holy banquet, we beseech you, Lord Jesus Christ, to bring those you have redeemed by the wood of your life-giving cross to the glory of the resurrection, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Finally, 
a word of congratulations to those who received the ministries tonight and certainly I uh, said at the beginning of Mass our prayers and good wishes go with you for the future. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.